We're looking for all real values of x that satisfy this equation. x to the power of 32 equals 2 to the power of x. The variable x appears both as a base and as an exponent. Standard techniques won't work here. We need to restructure this in a clever way. Let's start with the original equation. The key idea is to transform both sides so x appears in a symmetric form. Watch what happens when we raise both sides to a carefully chosen power. We'll raise both sides to the power of 1 over 32x. On the left side, we can apply the power rule. A power raised to a power becomes the base raised to the product of those exponents. So the exponent becomes 32 times 1 over 32x. Notice how the 32 in the numerator cancels with the 32 in the denominator. And we're left with this clean form, x to the power of 1 over x. Now let's apply the same reasoning to the right side. The exponent becomes x times 1 over 32x. Here, the x in the numerator cancels with the x in the denominator, leaving us with 2 to the power of 1 over 32. This is the form we'll work with. Before diving into algebra, let's visualize what we're looking for. Graphing both sides will reveal how many solutions exist. We'll plot y equals x to the power of 1 over x, and the horizontal line y equals 2 to the power of 1 over 32. The blue curve shows x to the power of 1 over x for positive x. The purple curve on the left shows the absolute value of x to the power of 1 over the absolute value of x for negative x, representing how the function behaves on the negative side. Using calculus, you can verify that the maximum occurs exactly when x equals e, Euler's number. The yellow line shows our target value, 2 to the power of 1 over 32. We're looking for where both curves cross this yellow line. And there they are. The blue curve crosses the yellow line here on the positive side. The purple curve also crosses the yellow line on the negative side. And because the blue curve continues to decay, it will cross the yellow line again, much further to the right. Now that we know three solutions exist, let's find them. The strategy is to rewrite the right side to match the left side's structure. We need to find some number a, where 2 to the power of 1 over 32 equals a to the power of 1 over a. The key insight is finding an integer m that makes this work. If we multiply numerator and denominator by m, we need 2 to the m to equal 32 times m. We're looking for an m where 2 to the m equals 32m. Let's try a few values. And remarkably, m equals 8 works perfectly. 2 to the 8th power is 256, which exactly equals 32 times 8. Now we can use this. We'll multiply both numerator and denominator by 8. This doesn't change the value since we're just multiplying by 1 in the form of 8 over 8. The denominator becomes 32 times 8, which is 256. Now we can use the power rule in reverse. 8 divided by 256 is the same as 2 to the 8, all raised to the power of 1 over 256. And this separates out the structure we need. 2 to the 8th is 256. And there's the magic. 256 to the power of 1 over 256. The structure on both sides is identical. x to the 1 over x equals 256 to the 1 over 256. So one solution is simply x equals 256. We found the elegant integer solution, but how do we find the other one? For that, we need a more powerful mathematical tool. Taking the natural logarithm of both sides of our simplified equation gives us the logarithm of x over x equals the logarithm of 2 over 32. This type of equation cannot be solved with elementary algebra. 
we need to introduce a special function called the Lambert W function. It's defined as the inverse function to z times e to the z. Our goal is to rearrange our equation into the form z times e to the z. Let's make a substitution. Let x equal e to the power of negative u. Substituting this into our equation gives the logarithm of e to the negative u divided by e to the negative u. The logarithm and the exponential are inverse functions, so they cancel out, leaving just negative u. The numerator simplifies to negative u. Bringing the e to the negative u from the denominator to the numerator changes the sign of its exponent. This gives us negative u times e to the u. Finally, we multiply both sides by negative 1 to get the perfect Lambert form. Now we have u times e to the u equals negative the logarithm of 2 over 32. We can now apply the w function. By definition, u is equal to the Lambert w function of the right-hand side. A key property of the Lambert function is that for arguments between negative 1 over e and 0, it has two real-valued branches called w0 and w minus 1. Our argument is in this range. The first solution comes from the w minus 1 branch. We can show that this value is exactly negative, the logarithm of 256. Recalling that x equals e to the negative u, we substitute this value back, and it gives us x 1 equals 256 confirming our first solution. The second solution comes from the principal branch, w0. This value is transcendental and cannot be simplified further. Plugging this into our substitution for x gives the exact form of the second solution. Numerically, this evaluates to approximately 1.022. We've found two positive solutions. But is it possible that a negative solution exists? Let's investigate. We'll start again from the original equation. Let's substitute x with negative y, where y is a positive number. This allows us to check the entire negative number line. The equation becomes negative y to the 32nd power equals 2 to the power of negative y. Since 32 is an even exponent, Negative y raised to the 32nd power is the same as positive y to the 32nd power. This simplifies the left-hand side. On the right side, 2 to the power of negative y is simply 1 divided by 2 to the power of y. This gets rid of the negative exponent. Now, let's multiply both sides by 2 to the power of y to clear the fraction. And we arrive at this equation u2 the 32nd times 2 to the y equals 1. To see if this equation has a solution, let's analyze the function on the left. Let's define a function f of y equal to y to the 32nd times 2 to the y. Remember, y must be positive. At y equals 0, the function is 0. At y equals 1, the function is 2. The function f of y is continuous for positive y because it goes from 0 to 2. The intermediate value theorem guarantees it must cross the value 1 somewhere in between. In fact, since the function is always increasing for positive y, there is exactly one solution for y, which we can call y0 between 0 and 1. Since x equals negative y, this gives us a third solution, x3 equals negative y0. So, after a complete analysis, we've discovered that our equation has not two but three distinct real solutions. First, the elegant integer solution, x equals 256, found by restructuring the equation. Second, a positive transcendental solution, x2 approximately equals 1.022, which we found using the Lambert W function. And third, a negative transcendental solution, 
which is the negative of some value between 0 and 1. This problem is a fantastic example of how a simple-looking equation can hide a rich and complex set of solutions, spanning integers and transcendental numbers across both positive and negative domains. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed exploring this problem, consider liking and subscribing for more mathematical insights.